I haven't done a video of this nature in a while. And a couple years ago, these were pretty popular when I did them. And uh, this is this is a GM people wanted me to talk about a couple years ago. Yarmo Kekalainen is an interesting case for a few things, and I want to get into that. Yarmo Kekalainen, the general manager of the Columbus Blue Jackets, the first European general manager of the team. Very short NHL career, spanned 55 games for Boston and Ottawa, five goals, eight assists, 13 points for Yarmo between Boston and Ottawa. Um, he left Yokerit to come back to uh, be a GM in the NHL. He had been assistant GM with the St. Louis Blues. Uh, when Scott Housen lost his job, um, John Davidson reached out to Yarmo, uh, felt he could work with Yarmo best, and that Yarmo could help fix what was wrong with the Columbus Blue Jackets. And so far, honestly, he's done well, but there's something to be said for not messing with a team too much when you take over. And I think that's part of what uh, Kekalainen's done right, is not just blow everything up. This is why when people say, just blow it up, I always look at that and I go, wait, no. Um, he inherited the following. Nick Foligno, Brandon Dubinsky, Cam Atkinson, David Savard, Sergei Bobrovsky, Curtis McElhinney, Ryan Murray, Boone Jenner, Josh Anderson, Jonas Carposalo, and Lucas Sedlak were all either on the team or in the team's uh, system at the time that he took over. McElhinney had been acquired uh, previously by Scott Housen, played that season in the minors, came up and played back up the year after. And Bobrovsky was already the starter at the time he took over. So for, for when you look at it, Bobrovsky's a key guy. Foligno's a key guy. So is Atkinson. Savard's become that. He wasn't when he took over. Murray, depends on who you ask. Boone Jenner, Josh Anderson, Corpus Allo as the backup. A lot of the, the key pieces were already in place. He knew not to get rid of them. When you look at him at the, the trade table, well, again, it's kind of a mixed bag here. Uh, April 3rd of 2013, he trades Steve Mason to the Flyers for Michael Layton and a 2015 third-round pick. Uh, April 3rd, 2013, he traded... Uh, Derek Broussard, Dorset, John Moore, and a 2014 sixth round pick to the Rangers for Gabarik, Parlett, and Delisle. Of course, uh, Gabarik, uh, enigmatic for years now. Uh, teams at that point were still like, well, maybe he can get it back, but he learned pretty quick. March 5th of the following year, he traded Gabarik to LA for Matt Fratton, a 2014 second rounder, and a conditional third. That was a, we don't want this contract on the books. You want, how would you like to have a bit of a rental? You just go ahead and take them. And of course, Gabrick, that worked out pretty well for LA. They won the cup that year. So LA, while they may look at the Gabrick contract now and say, oh, that just wasn't worth it. The fact is they, they got, um, they got a pretty good return for it. Of course, I know Gabrick's now in Ottawa. Um, June, June 23rd, 2014, uh, he traded RJ Umberger in a 2015 fourth round pick for Scotty Hartnell. From Philly so decent deal there of course Hartnell just finished his career out with Nashville this past uh, uh, I guess May when they would have been done playing hockey June 30th 2015 he traded Dano Anisimov Trop Moran and a 2016 fourth round pick for Brandon Saad Broadhurst and Pagliota uh, January 6th of 2016 he traded Ryan Johansson to Nashville for Seth Jones now, Jones is a fantastic defenseman. Now, not having Johansson, was there a hole down the middle for Columbus after this deal? Absolutely, but Seth Jones, totally worth it. Uh, June 21st, 2017, traded a 2017 first-round pick, a 2019 second-round pick, and the contract of, of Clarkson, one that he had acquired from Toronto for the contract of Nathan Horton, uh, and future considerations, draft considerations, which became William Carlson. So in order to hold on to other players... Uh, they, they traded out quite a bit. And we have yet to see. Now, Carlson, you can point out and say, well, that was a loss for Columbus. That's okay. If you want to make that a loss, you can. Uh, but nobody knew at the time Carlson went to Vegas what he was going to do when he got there. Nobody saw a 30-goal scorer, much less 40. Uh, and it's, it's one season and a little bit, and we'll see this year where Carlson ends up. Uh, and, and to hold on to what they had that could have been lost in that expansion draft, I think it was it was a, an expensive gamble, but so far I don't think it's hurt them too much. June 23rd, 2017, he traded Saad back to Chicago 
with Forsberg, and that's Anton Forsberg, a 2018 fifth round pick to Chicago for Panarin, Mott, and a 2017 sixth round pick. Now, Panarin's the reason I'm doing this video because um, Stan Bowman has come out and said that when he looks at what Panarin's doing with Columbus right now, well, that's why I traded him. I don't have a problem with the deal even now because that's why I traded him. I knew this was going to happen. But I'm telling you, Brandon Saad, who may be a healthy scratch pretty quickly here for Chicago, and according to the news headlines, that's a surprise to him. Um, you know, honestly, for what they what they traded away, Panarin's a steal. And I don't care if he walks away from Columbus. This has been a steal. And it is one reason that we look at Kakalainen and say this guy's a really good GM. Uh, February 26, 2018. I'm going to change that to an 8. Uh, 2018. He traded uh, Mott and Jokinen to the Canucks for Vanek. And, of course, I lost it at the time because Jokinen had been on waivers and Mott could have been acquired for probably less. But I will say this. It's a trade that worked for both teams in hindsight. Vanek had a very solid run uh, with Columbus. Played 19 games, had 7 goals and 8 assists, 15 points in 19 games. Played relatively well for them in that first round. They lost to Washington, not Vanek's fault. And, of course, Mott is still a Vancouver Canuck. He's a fourth liner. He's a grinder. He's not going to score a bunch of goals. But they got something back for Vanek that's still on the team now. And Jokin, of course, uh, appears to be at the end of his career. So uh, Kekalainen lost nothing that he would have preferred to keep. Um, when you look at the draft table, 2013, he drafts Wenberg. Wenberg's a pretty solid player. He drafts Reichel at 19. Mantha was available at 20. So, you know, if you do that over, Mantha probably goes first. Dano at 27. Hartman was available at 30. Hartman's already been traded by the Blackhawks. Uh, Bjorkstrand was drafted at 89. Has yet to live up to uh, his potential, but it's still there. 2014, he drafted Sonny Milano ahead of Nick Schmaltz, who went at 20. Uh, 2015, he drafts Wierenski at number 8. And at number 189 is uh, Nudavara. And Nudevar is on their, in their lineup. And whether he's good or he's crap or whatever he is, the fact that you can draft a guy at 189 and he becomes a regular in your roster, that's a win. Uh, 2016, uh, Dubois drafted at three. And people, myself included, were very surprised that Pugliarvi was not the guy who got picked instead. Uh, and, and right now, to this point, Columbus was completely justified. Dubois has been a better player at the NHL level than Pugliarvi. As I'm recording this... October 27th, 2018. And I'm going to go ahead and timestamp it in this video because Pugliarvi's still early in his career and could turn it around. Um, 2017, he grabbed uh, Tessier, Texier uh, at number 45. And I'm saying it the way I'm saying it because I know he's, he's from Grenoble, France. Birthplace of Andre the Giant. And uh, Texier could, could end up being a, a steal in the second round that year. And this past June, he drafted Liam Foody, Foodie had a, a solid camp, uh, put up some, some goals and points in the preseason, and then got sent back down. At the draft table, Kekalainen is very solid. And partly because he's a European GM, he doesn't have a problem drafting Europeans, but he also drafts his share of North Americans as well. Now, when you look at their current lineup, and I, I got this off daily face-off, I am not in any way, shape, or form suggesting this is going to be their roster every night, or these are their line combinations permanently. Uh, Panarin... Acquired in a trade. Dubois acquired in the draft. Atkinson, he inherited. If it's a, a brown asterisk, he inherited him. And if it's a, a black asterisk, he drafted him. Foligno, trade, uh, he inherited. Wenberg, he drafted. Duclair, he signed as a free agent July 5th of 2015. Boone Jenner, inherited. Riley Nash, he signed as a free agent uh, on July 1st of this past year, 2018. And Anderson, he inherited. Milano drafted fourth line. Sedlak um, came in. I've got Sedlak up here. He was inherited, so that should have been. I should have asterisked that one. He's inherited. Bjorkstrand was drafted by him. Uh, so out of their top twelve forwards, four of them are draft picks of Kakalinens. On the blue line, Wierenski draft pick. Jones traded for Murray inherited. Nudavara drafted. Uh, Kukin was. Uh, signed June 1st of 2015 as an un undrafted free agent. Uh, Savard inherited. And a goal, in goal, both Bobrovsky and Corpusalo are inherited players. Uh, also noteworthy is on August 1st of 2016, 
They signed Sam Gagne to a one-year contract. He had a resurgent year in Columbus and didn't decide to re-up with Columbus, and he should have. Gagne, that reminds me of Anson Carter in Vancouver, where he had the one really good year, and then he cashed in on it. And in hindsight, he should have taken less money to stay in Columbus because odds are he would probably still be in the NHL at this point. Uh, it was a good mix there. When you look at his body of work, it hasn't been an extremely long uh, tenure for him as GM, but it's been solid. And again, this is an example of how when you take over a team, you're going to make changes, but don't change everything. Don't move everybody out, and don't blow it up. Even though Columbus, when he took over, let's be honest, Columbus was not a considered destination for great players. And Columbus is still a mid-link team. And this is part of the reason why Panarin's like, I don't know if I want to stick around. And Bobrovsky hasn't re-signed yet. And this could turn into a complete disaster. But if we've looked at... But in looking at his, his track record, Kekalainen is not a general manager who panics. And there's something to be said for a general manager who's deliberate and usually makes the right decision. So there you go. Uh... Pretty easy to go over his track record because he's only got the five years as GM and he hasn't made a ton of big deals. But when he does make a big trade, in my opinion, he usually wins it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.